Hey everybody, this is Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Now, we've gone over everything you can do with the if statement. However, all the tests we did were with numbers. We didn't do any type of string tests. And there's times when you might want to actually do a string test. Say, for example, you want somebody to enter a password in, and you want to check to make sure they enter the right password. So, let's get started. Here are our math test and the corresponding string test. Notice the square brackets and the double quotes. Also, you need white space between the double brackets and the variable name. So here's the math test for the equal equality test. What we had was the double parentheses, and we didn't use the dollar sign in front of the variable names because corn shell automatically assume that anything inside of the double parentheses is a variable. And the other thing we did was we had to use a double equal sign because a single equal sign inside of a double parenthesis means assign the value that's in num2 to the variable in num1. Now things are a little different with string tests. If you want to test a string against another string, or if you want to test a string against a specific value, then you do something like this. You use double square brackets instead of the double parentheses, and you must put the white space in between the double square bracket and the variable name on each side. And you'll notice we use dollar signs in front of the variable names. The reason why we do that is because corn shell would, if you didn't do that, corn shell would think that you are trying to find or match a string s2. So by putting the dollar sign in front, we go to the variable s2, get the value that's inside of it, and plop it right here. Now, the reason for the double quotes is sometimes variable, variables that are strings have spaces in them, and you would need, in order to get the whole variable with all the spaces in it, you have to put it in double quotes. Otherwise, corn shell would see the space and think it's the end of the string. So, for example, the name New York City, when it got to the space after the word new, it would think that was the end of the variable, that was the end of the pattern you were trying to find or match instead of New York City. So that's why you need the double quotes. Also, if you put in nothing inside of a variable name, sometimes corn shell doesn't like it. In other words, the value is null. Corn shell won't like it unless you have the double quotes there. And notice also that you use a single equal sign for a test for strings. So once again, you're using the double, per, double square brackets, using dollar signs for variable substitution, and you're using a single equal sign. So for equals, it's an equal sign. The equal test is an equal sign. And just to remind you, to do an assignment in corn shell, you say assign, go to S2, get the value there because we have the dollar sign in front, and assign it to S1. And notice, once again, no spaces in between the variable, the equal sign, and the variable over here. And on the right hand side you have the dollar sign for variable substitution. On the left hand side you have no dollar sign for variable substitution. Okay, now how do you do not equals? In the math you do the not equal sign. In string test you do the same exact thing. Now for less than you did a less than sign. For string tests you also use a less than sign. However, there's a couple gotchas here. One, this is all based off of the ASCII character set. And the letter capital Z actually comes before the letter lowercase a in an ASCII character set. So if you want to do alphabetical sorting, make sure that all your variables or all your values are either uppercase or all lowercase because the word zebra with a capital Z will actually come before the word ant with a lowercase a 
according to the ASCII character set. The other thing that you want to watch out for is 19 will become will come before the number 2. The reason for that is the way string tests work is it goes to the first character, it sees a 1, and it compares it to the first character of the other variable, which is a 2. So therefore, 1 comes before 2, therefore 19 comes before 2. Greater than, just use a greater than symbol, and once again, the same things about the ASCII character set apply. Now, for less than or equal to, in the numbers test, we use the less than or equal to sign. However, the string tests don't have that. What you have to do is you have to do a less than test right here. Or, which is the double vertical pipe, an equal to test right here. So you just break it out into two separate components. And always good idea to surround your test with a single quote if it's a compound test. Greater than or equal to will obviously be the will obviously be very similar. You have a greater than test right here. The double vertical pipes, which mean or, and you have an equal to test right here. The other thing you can do is test to see if a string has zero length. You do that with double square bracket dash z for zero length and the name of the variable, of course, with the dollar sign in front, and then the close square bracket. And the next thing you can test for is non-zero length, which is going to be a dash n. Dash n for non-zero, dash z for zero. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Next lesson, we'll actually do some string tests, and we'll introduce how you would test for a string that begins with a letter A or ends in dot KSH.